Hi everyone, so here we go, another video, this time on uh, differentiation, which you may have heard the word differentiation before, but what does it kind of really mean? It's also links with this word calculus. What does calculus mean? Well, whenever you hear calculus, that means using either differentiation or what's called integration, which is kind of your next step after differentiation. So differentiation or integration, right? So don't let that put you off when you hear that word. Calculus is actually the Greek word for pebble. Uh, the reason why it was called, you know, why calculus is linked with that is because the ancient Greeks used to use pebbles in order to count votes, you know, in their democracy. So you'd have a black pebble or a white pebble normally, and they would walk up to a vase and drop the color that they wanted into that vase so then it can be counted. So calculus kind of links to that because if we're talking integration, we'll talk about this further. If you want to find the area beneath a curve, that's what integration is for. And how it does it is it splits the area up into an infinite number of lines. And those lines or rectangles with kind of zero width are added together. They're counted together uh, in order to make that area. So that's where the word calculus comes from. What is differentiation specifically? Well, differentiation <coughs> enables us to find the gradient of uh, the tangent at any point on a curve, right? So w before, we're used to having straight lines, aren't we? And the gradient of a straight line is our m, isn't it? Where m was the change in y over the change in x. Another way to notate that is through these little triangles, delta x over delta y, and then more formally, it's our dy by dx. So dy by dx is, means differentiation has taken place. dy by dx means change in y over change in x. The notation itself can be explained in a minute. You know, why, you know, we've got triangles there, does that mean the same thing, etc. But essentially, this dy by dx, this means find the gradient uh, function on a curve. Because let's be clear, when you've got a straight line, the gradient, the change in y over change in x, is constant, isn't it? So in this situation, dy by dx is constant for a line. But for a curve, let's look at a curve, the gradient is not constant, is it? Here, the graph is steeply getting, uh, it's getting, uh, it's going up steeper than anywhere else. The gradient here is definitely quite large, but then it starts to peter out, doesn't it? The graph starts to smooth over until this point here, which is called a stationary point, stationary point where your gradient dy by dx is zero because look remember here's the tangent at any point so differentiation will tell you the gradient of the tangent at any point and a tangent remember is a line where it just crosses the graph once it just touches the graph okay so at that localized bit of the curve dy by dx is zero, the gradient is zero. And then the gradient becomes negative, doesn't it? So negative gradient here, positive gradient here, another stationary point, dy by dx is zero. Now the gradient's uh, positive again because the, gra the graph is starting to increase. So dy by dx here is greater than zero. And then you've got your stationary point again. And then again, it goes up. So the problem with a curve is, that on a curve, the gradient is not constant. 
and therefore we would have an associated gradient function. And how differentiation works, we'll go through in a second, but if you imagine this curve, like y equals x squared plus 1, let's say, you can see that if I take any two points on that curve and draw a line between them, this is not a constant gradient, is it? Because this does not actually map the curve at all. It doesn't represent the curve at all. It's not a tangent to the curve. So it definitely does not have a constant gradient. Now there's a formula for differentiation and it's this one here. So it says that if y equals a x to the n, where a is a, where a and n are both constants, so remember that fancy r means all the real numbers and a and n are an element, that's what that e stands for, of the set of real numbers, right? Then dy by dx will equal the power comes down, n a, the constant stays, x to the n minus 1. So in other words, power comes down, take 1 from the power, right? So if I had y equals x squared dy by dx, which remember this stands for the gradient function of the curve, would be power comes down 2, x and then one you know two take away one because one is taken away from the power so your gradient is 2x what does that mean well just think about it in terms of um, velocity and acceleration let's say so let's say that the velocity of a particle was our y equals x squared or you could say velocity is time squared so here's t and here's v or something like that, right? So you know that when you, the rate of change of velocity is acceleration. So dv by dt is acceleration, right? Because that's change in velocity over change in time. And what is that gradient? Well, this thing starts, this thing starts on the negative gradient, doesn't it? It's the, the graph is, if you're talking velocity, the graph is slowing down. The particle is slowing down until it reaches velocity zero. That makes sense then, because we know that we're going to have a is 2t, or a is 2x, depending on the variable, right? So from here to here, it's saying that it's steepness of the acceleration. So here's acceleration and here's time goes to zero. That takes us up to this point here. And then it starts getting bigger again. Well, and our acceleration starts getting bigger again to infinity. But remember, this is the original. And this one is your gradient function. OK. So the link between differentiation it's something that you already know, that change in velocity over time is acceleration. Change in distance over time is velocity. Okay. Now, where does this actually come from, this formula? Well, where it comes from is differentiation from first principles. And it will kind of help you understand what's going on. Because like I say, if we understand normally when we understand where things come from then we we can appreciate links better so you don't need to know differentiation for first principles but it helps understand what's going on so let's take any function y equals f of x that's this squiggly line here we take a point x and therefore it has a corresponding y value of f of x if I move a small distance along delta x, your new x coordinate is x plus delta x, which will take us here. And remember, if we have f of lemons, we'll get, uh, so if we have x is lemons, we'll have f of lemons as its uh, y coordinate. So if we've got x plus delta x, our y coordinate will be f of x plus delta x. Now, you know that the gradient of a straight line is change in y over change in x. So this f prime 
is another way of saying dy by dx. Okay? So, keep that in mind. Just It's just a notation thing. So, change in y. Here's our first y coordinate. No different to what you've done before. Here's f of x. There's, so, that's y2 take y1 over x2 take x1. Okay? So, at the moment, we've got f of x plus delta x, subtract f of x, all over x and x minus x cancel, so delta x here. Now, you can see from my picture that this line doesn't represent the curve at all, does it? We're trying to find the gradient of uh, the curve at a point, the gradient of the tangent at the point. A tangent, as you know, crosses only once, but this line crosses twice. So logically, what should we do? How do we get a better approximation? Well, what if we made delta x smaller? So we brought the point closer together. <clears throat> Here I've got a straight line. Does it match the curve? No, but it's slightly better than it was before. So again, should we take a smaller point? Oh, that's starting to look better. Let's take smaller, 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 smaller. You see the point? You see, get the picture? That if we get two points so close to each other, that even on a curve, so here's a curve, if I take a point here and a point literally right next to it, so close to it, it's basically on top of it. So if I get delta x to be almost zero in space, so so, so, so uh, narrow, so, so small, so delta x would tend to zero, that's what that arrow means, that the points are basically on top of each other, they're infinitesimally close. So if I had a camera that could zoom in an infinite number of times, just kept zooming in, zooming in, zooming in, zooming in, in theory, eventually I should see two points and a line between those two points. So the, the <coughs> fundamentals are still the same. It's still changing y over changing x, considering two coordinates, but the point is the coordinates are infinitesimally close. So you can see what happens. So before you had a point here, point here, no tangent because it crosses twice. If I bring that point closer, still no tangent, crosses twice. But if I bring this point so, so close that it's basically on top of it, you get a tangent. It will only cross once. And that's the whole point of differentiation, to find the gradient, the rate of change of a curve at a point. So that's why we need to add this limit as delta x tends to zero a business. That's what this means. The limit, you take two points and then you snap them together infinitesimally close and then you've got it. Okay, so this is differentiation from first principles. Like I say, you do not need to use this ever but it is explaining how differentiation works. And it will also explain how you get the formula if uh, y equals ax to the n, then dy by dx will be nax to the n minus 1. Okay? Because let's test it. So let's test what happens when we got y equals x squared. So or f of x equals x squared. There's f of x equals x squared. We'll use our theory like before. I'll take a point, take a point. Okay, so here's x, some distance, delta x, this is x plus delta x, right? The corresponding y values, f of x, f of x plus delta x. So let's go for it. f of x is x squared. f of x plus delta x is, remember what's in there? becomes squared. So what's in there becomes squared. Delta x squared, which if I multiply that out, is x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x all squared. And now I can literally pop this into my gradient formula, so my first principles formula. So f dash of x equals the limit, as delta x tends to zero, of f of x plus delta x, which is this, x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x all squared, subtract f of x. So subtract x squared <coughs> all over delta x. 
So now we can clean this up. So we can't take the limit as delta x. We can't snap these two points together yet because of this divided by delta x. And if, if we made delta x 0 now, you'd be dividing by 0 and all of our noses will start bleeding, right? So first we need to clean this whole thing up first. So x squared cancels this x squared here, doesn't it? And here I've got 2x delta x left then, plus our delta x all squared over delta x. Let's clean that up a bit more. So 2x delta x over delta x, that's 2x, plus delta x squared over delta x is also just delta x. Okay, can you see? It cancels here and it cancels here. And now we can take delta x tends to zero because it does not, it's not being divided by zero. So we've got our two points, we've cleaned it up and now we're making the space between them so, so small, it's basically together. The delta x then will go to zero and the 2x has nothing to do with delta x. So there we go, we're left with our 2x. And we knew from the formula that if we had y equals x squared, our dy by dx would equal to 2x. Why is that? Well, because of this. We've just literally shown that that's the case. So this isn't a proof, but it is showing you why that formula works or roughly how it works. So we've done f of x is x squared. So <coughs> let's just keep practicing with that formula for now. So remember, if y equals ax to the n, dy by dx equals nax to the n minus 1. So the power comes down, subtract 1 from the power. So if I want to find f dash of x here, first off, I want to clean this up a bit. I want to clean this up because this is not in this form yet. So always get your indices, so your powers, correct first. This is 1 over 2x, isn't it? So now I can write that properly. So 3x to the 5 plus a half x to the minus 1. Now differentiate f dash of x equals power comes down. So that's 15x minus 1 from the power. So 3 times 5 is 15. And now we've got plus the half stays. Power comes down minus 1 x to the take 1 from the power. So this gives me 15x to the 4 minus 1 over 2x squared, okay? Really important that your indices are solid. And what about this one? So y equals this. Again, we'll clean this up. So this is 16x cubed plus 2x plus 2 all over x to the half. So remember, this is the same as each element divided by x to the half. And now I can clean this up. So y equals 16x cubed over x to the half. So that's the cubed take away the half. So that's 5 over 2. Plus 2 stays x to the 1 divided by x to the half. x to the 1 minus a half. So that's a half. Plus 2. And then I've got my x to the minus a half. That's that section here. <clears throat> and now I can differentiate. So dy by dx is 16 stays, power comes down, take 1 from the power. So 3 over 2 plus 2, power comes down, take 1 from the power. Plus constant, power comes down, take 1 from the power. Easy, isn't it? easy to use really and now you can simplify this up so 16 divided by 2 is 8 times 5 that's 40 and then plus 2 times a half so that's gone you've got your 1 over x to the half or root x <coughs> minus 1 over x to the 3 over 2 and we're done okay and that's the end of this video